Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of the Frankfurt, Mokina, and New Lenox areas. I ask that you come to this time with an open heart and an open mind. Ready yourself that we may truly come into the presence of God and leave transformed as people living in abundant life. Friends, hear this affirmation. The Lord said, I'll make all my goodness pass in front of you, and I'll proclaim before you the name, the Lord. I'll be kind to whomever I wish to be kind, and I will have compassion to whomever I wish to be compassionate. Exodus thirty-three nineteen. Friends, as we come to the end of the week, take all that stuff that's happened. Just let go of it. Set it down. Set it aside for a moment. And just dwell in the presence of the divine. Where two or three are gathered, Christ is here. Join me in an attitude of prayer. Lord, you are compassionate and merciful. You are patient, faithful, and just. Help us show compassion to others as you show compassion to us. Forgive our apathy, indifference, and self-interest towards others and transform these attitudes into kindness, charity, and love so that we may be one with you and one with each other. Amen. Our theme this week has been compassion. And our final anthology reading comes from James McGinnis. Ordinary Caring makes extraordinary perseverance possible. In caring, Jesus is our model and leader. Each day, Jesus retreated from the demands of serving others to be prayerfully with his God. Then, he was better able to come down from his mountain retreat to minister more fully to those needing and pleading for his love. He turned away no one, but he also didn't try to do it all by himself. He enlisted others to extend God's caring to all, especially to the least of God's people. Today, he invites each of us anew to be his ministers of caring in our own time and place. In the words of Helen Prejean, how will we be the face of Christ for others? Mm, powerful words. Good reminder, too. Uh, that that Jesus, who who is God, didn't do it all himself. And maybe that's something you need to hear today, that you don't have to do it all yourself. And you can't. <laughs> maybe that's something you need to hear today. Sometimes that's what I need to hear. You can't do it all. Jesus spent time every day focused on God. He, you know, in the Methodist church, we have these two, these two kind of competing realities. Uh, we, we say we have, we have personal holiness. We have social justice. These are the two kind of pillars of the Methodist experience. And, and in my experience, most Methodists and, and really most Christians, um, good Christians, like people who are trying, doing their best, do one of those things pretty good. <laughs> Most of us don't do both of them well. Or at least both of them okay. And we have to. Because love of God and love of neighbor, that's where they come from. Personal holiness, love of God, social justice, love of neighbor. They're, they're intimately tied. You can't, you can't do one without the other. They, 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 they'll both fall short if you, you know, if you're just loving God, but you, you're a jerk, you miss, you're missing it. If you're just, just engaged in helping others, but you're not centering yourself and, and you're not focused, it can go off the rails real quick. So do we take time, center ourselves, and then participate in caring ministry? A lot of big churches, uh, churches, the size of the church I serve and, and even larger, get into this habit of hiring people to do the work. 
That's not what the church is about. The church is in a business. Like everybody who's part of the church, if you are a member of the church, that's that's the idea. You're part of you're part of the help. You gotta help. You don't come and consume a product. That's not church. That's everything else in the world. Church is you come and you be part of it. You you come to help. You come to care. And so caregiving, compassion, is a ministry of all Christians. And and guess what? If you expect just the pastors to do it, it's not going to happen. Like, I'm not saying pastors aren't going to be compassionate. We are, and we're trying. We can't do it all ourselves. Even Jesus didn't do it all himself. He equipped the disciples. He equipped the 70. And then he said, you, I want you to go out and do what I did. And the more of us do that, the better things get. That's our mission, to make disciples, to make followers of Jesus Christ, to transform the world. Because the more people that we get to be compassionate and caring and engaged in that ministry, the better the world becomes. It, it's a good ministry. It's not about putting notches in our belt so we know how many people we help save and get to heaven. Jesus did all that work 2,000 years ago. Our work is to make this world his kingdom come, his kingdom present. Our final scripture reading this week comes from Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 25. Therefore, after you have got rid of lying, each of you must tell the truth to your neighbor, because we are parts of the same body. Be angry without sinning. Don't let the sun set on your anger. Don't provide an opportunity for the devil. Thieves should no longer steal. Instead, they should go to work using their hands to do good so that they will have something to share with whoever is in need. Don't let any foul words come out of your mouth. Only say what is helpful when it is needed for building up the community so that it benefits those who will hear what you say. Don't make the Holy Spirit of God unhappy. You were sealed by him for the day of redemption. Put aside bitterness, losing your temper, anger, shouting, slander, along with every other evil. Be kind, compassionate, and forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. God bless the reading of the letter to the church in Ephesus uh, and Paul's words here. You know, he, he doesn't say don't be angry. He says don't let the sun set on your anger. He says be angry without sinning. He says speak truth, but, but don't let any foul words come out of your mouth and say what is helpful for building each other up. I, I've, I've dealt with too many Christians who are, well, I just tell it as it is. No, you're, you're a jerk. Because is what you're saying as it is, or I'm just telling the truth, is it helpful? Is it encouraging? Is it building anyone up except you? And if it's not, then you're just a jerk. Stop it. Be better. There's a time for accountability. And there's a time to call people out. I had situations just recently where you don't, you don't let bad things just happen. When you have to stop somebody and say, hey, listen, what you're doing is wrong. Let's have a conversation about it. Because you're hurting others and you're hurting yourself. Be kind, compassionate, forgiving. In the same way, God forgave you. On this final day of the week, we reflect on our offerings, how we can serve and give with our time, our talents, and our treasures. 
how we are called to be an offering in all things we do. Let us reflect in a moment how we may continue to grow in giving and adopt an attitude of gratitude. Friends, let us pray the Wesley Covenant Prayer. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.